Hi, my name is Chen Chen. I'm working in the genetics department of Stanford University. My talk is about how we use nanopore sequencing to perform differential isoform analysis and review disease relevant transcripts. As you all know, alternate splicing is the process that generates different RNA isoforms to increase its diversity and complexity. It can have a very complex patterns, such as inclusion of different first and last axons. Introns can be re selectively retained, and axons can be mutually exclusive. Sometimes splice sites at either the five prime and the three prime ends can also change. More functioning of alternate splicing underlines many diseases, including uh, heart diseases. Shown here is an example of a buried splicing of the Lamin A gene. Normal axons are in blue, and disease associated splicing events are in purple boxes. What you can appreciate is depending on how splicing process is affected, whether a splice site is disrupted or intron is retained, it can lead to multiple heart diseases with very different phenotypes. The traditional method to study RNA uh, autumn splicing is short read RNA seq and reads of length about 100 to 150 BP fall within the axon boundaries or across axon axon junctions. This method typically generates many reads, which enables accurate quantification of either the gene or the axon of interest. However, due to the limitation in read length, any long range coupling between two alternative axons is lost, shown here. And short read RNA seq doesn't capture the full sequence context of the transcripts. This is where the long read sequencing comes in. With read length up to 100 KB, it can easily generate reads that span the whole transcripts. We study the heart alternate splicing process in dilated cardiomyopathy. It is a disease of heart muscle, which gets weaker over time and forced to, fails to pump enough blood to the body, ultimately leads to heart failure. Half of the disease's cases are familiar with about 3% of the identified mutations affecting cardiac specific splicing factor RBN20 and resulting in a particularly severe form of the disease. These mutations I highlight in RS domain of RBN20 genes disrupts its splicing activity. It is known from previous studies using a short read RNA-seq that RBN20 mutations uh, the RBN20 expressions correlates with the splicing of downstream targets such as Titan, ChemK2D, and RYR2. If RBN20 level is too low, the splicing of its targets might be incomplete. However, it was not clear what are the exact transcript isoforms that are deregulated in RBN20 mutants that ultimately lead to dilated cardiomyopathy. To review these aberrant transcripts, we therefore generated IPS-derived cardiomyocytes for the point mutant R634Q and its isogenic control and sequenced their cDNA using the mean iron platform. The experimental procedure is fairly standard. We generate the cDNA using, uh, from RNA using the SmartSeq2 protocol. The read length distribution corresponds very well with the bioanalyzer profile for the raw library, suggesting overall very good quality. In total, we obtained over 30 million 1D reads, and with read length goes up to 20 KB. The median, median read length is about 1.7 KB. Because long read uh, sequencing tends to be a little bit noisy, it's therefore very easy to get uh, false discoveries in identification as well as quantification. To assess quality of the sequencing results, we use synthetic spiking control for which the number and the structure of the splice isoforms are known. We observed issues like five prime and three prime truncated reads where the ends are incomplete. We also had misalignment of splice sites shown here, up to 5% of all reads. In particular, we noticed that the alignment rate drops quickly when axons are small in size, shown here. Axons shorter than 60 dp are often not properly aligned. Therefore, we develop an algorithm that tackles th these issues and effectively removes false positive transcripts and thereby achieved our overall identification accuracy of 98%. Our pipeline also 
shows quantification measurement of splicing isoforms at genome scale. Here is a complex region with many known, shown in green, as well as previously unannotated transcripts in red on both the plus and the minus strand. The supporting raw reads are shown in blue here, uh, which gives the quantification value here, the 23, for example. This is how many reads correspond to each transcript. I believe such comprehensive view and direct and quantification of transcripts are only possible because of long read sequencing. In total, we could identify over 36,000 transcripts, 30% of which are novel, and about two isoforms per gene on average, just from one tissue type. We classified novel splicing events into different types, such as, an, such as axon skipping, internal tension. The most abundant category is the novel combination where all axons have previously been identified, but their combination haven't been observed yet. Using the quantification table, we then performed differential isoform uh, analysis between the mutant and the control and identified 38 misspliced transcript isoforms in 34 genes enriching for cardiac function. One of the prominent examples here is the gene IMT. Only two, only these two out of its five transcripts are differentially expressed. Notably, while the overall RNA level of nine of the 34 genes was unchanged in the mutant, our approach revealed significant differences in the expression of specific isoforms highlighted here in red in these genes. This includes several known targets of RBN20, like IMT, TPM1, and 2. Compared to conventional RNA-seq, where only gene or axons are quantified, our approach could directly pinpoint to the aberrant isoforms. Shown here are all the the all annotated transcripts from the gene code annotation. Classical analysis using short read RNA-seq only provides information on which isoforms are affected in the mutant, as in indicated here with our PSI analysis. You have to kind of like make your best guess on which isoforms are being affected. Long read sequencing, on the other hand, enabled us to identify two new isoforms, IMMT SL1 and SL2. A side-by-side -side comparison um, intuitively illustrates that these two new isoforms are only expressed in the wild type, but not in the mutant. By comparing to the annotation, we could find that these two new isoforms have one axon less compared to their counterparts, IMMT207 and 204, respectively. This suggests that they are splicing products of IMMT207 and 204. This information can be very useful for downstream analysis. Our own analysis revealed that the splicing of this particular axon uh, can lead to disruption of non-protein uh, domains. In conclusion, we established a full-length isoform sequencing and computational analysis pipeline using Oxford Nanopore technologies. We successfully generated the first genome-wide full-length transcript isoform annotation for human heart cells and we tested a differential expression at the transcript level and performed a transcript usage analysis. One of the key findings is that we discovered aberrant splicing isoforms caused by RBN20 mutations and could demonstrate the need of analyzing RNA isoform expression levels rather than total gene expression levels. Last but not least, I would like to acknowledge the team for the project. Jin Yang carried out all the sequencing work and Francesca provided the IPS-derived cardiomyocytes. Han performed the analysis on the short-read RNA-seq. And I thank WAVE and Lars Steinmetz for their supervision.